calls you a saint. You know that you aren't always completely saintly, but he calls you a saint based on what you have the potential to be if you will allow him to work you. Aren't you glad that God doesn't see you just for what you have been, just for what you are right now, but he sees you for the potential that he knows he has placed in you. So when he gives us a job to do, when he gives us work to do, we never fall back and say, God, there is no way I can do what you gave me to do based on my experience, based on my intelligence, based on my education, based on what I've done right. before. Because God is addressing you because he sees the potential he has placed in you. Many of us know that when we become parents, when someone first calls us mommy, there's no way that we have any idea what it really means to be a mother. But God places that responsibility on us as mothers and fathers. He calls us mother and father based on our potential to live out that responsibility. Verse 13 says, but sir, Gideon replied, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? He said, where are all his wonders that our fathers told us about when they said, did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and put us in the hand of men. Have you ever said that to God? Be honest. Have you ever said to God, God, if you are with me, how, how is it that all of this trouble has come my way? If, if I'm blessed by you, if your favor surrounds me as a shield, why do I have to keep going through all of this stuff? Why are the pieces not falling together? I know you're powerful. I've heard the stories of the miracles you've worked in my family. I know what the word says you can do. I know what you have done in the past. But if you're with me, God, why am I going through all of this? In other words, why me? Why does this have to happen to me? Why do I have to deal with all these challenges? Why is it that I keep falling back? It seems like the enemy keeps taking advantage of who I am and where I am. He said, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? He said, the Lord brought us out of Egypt, but yes. now the Lord has abandoned us and put us in the hand of men. Gideon did not understand as we don't always understand. Yes. It's a universal question for believers. Does this trouble that I'm going through does it mean that God has abandoned me? Does the fact that I keep having to go through all of this stuff, does it mean that God has stepped back from my situation? Has he left me by myself? Has he left me to be in the hands of the oppressor? Am I going to continue to be dangling in the wind, not knowing from day to day which way I'm going to turn when the challenges come? <coughs> this is the truth that God reveals from this scripture. God never abandons us. I came by to tell you this morning that no matter what you're going through, no matter how long it's been going on, no matter how long you think the trial has lasted, no matter whether it seems like you've been under machine gun fire and every time you get out from under one barrage, here comes another. God has not abandoned you. God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. God draws near. He hears our cry. Yes. But trouble is an opportunity 
as he draws close to us. And it's an opportunity for God to show his power <coughs> and his glory. Verse 14 says, the Lord turned to him and said, go in the strength you have. He said, go in the strength you have and do what I told you to do. Go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. If you have your Bibles, underline those words. Go in the strength you have. He said, am I not sending you? In other words, start where you are. Use what you have. But God, I can't speak like them. Use what you have. Do what you can. Take the resources that God has given you and use them for his glory and God will explode those resources. Do what you can. Don't put it off. Don't procrastinate. Don't be waiting to be ready to do what God told you to do. You will not be ready just sitting there. You need to get out from under the oak tree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go in the strength you have. Well, God, I don't make $50,000. Tithe on what you do make. Use what you have. Do what you can. <coughs> but God, I don't have the resources other people have. Do you have a telephone? Pick it up and encourage somebody. Speak a word of encouragement to someone. But God, I don't have a car. Get on the bus and witness to the person sitting beside you. But God, I'm not a preacher. Witness to your co-worker. Yes. I can't pray in front of everybody like everybody else. Well, pray with your own child. Pray in your own home. But God, I don't understand the scriptures like everybody else. Well, read what you do understand. Memorize what you do understand. And trust God to pour in more understanding. He said, go in the strength you have. But God, I, I don't know what you want me to do. Ask him. Yes. Say, God, reveal to me what you have given me to use for your glory. Help me to go in the strength I have. The Lord said, am I not sending you? In other words, who's in charge of this thing? 